The initials CBCL stands for cutaneous B-cell lymphoma. Lymphomas are classified in a variety of terms. B-cell lymphomas are a different class of lymphomas compared to T-cell lymphomas. Cutaneous B-cell lymphoma is an unusual disorder where someone gets a, a B-cell or a B-lymphocytic lymphoma that's only in their skin. Uh, the reason it's unusual is because B-cells usually live in lymph nodes, and no one really knows why they do that in somebody's skin. Uh, usually it presents as a nodule. Uh, it can often be around the face or the hairline or on the legs uh, or arms. And there's basically three different kinds, two of which grow very slowly, a third of which grows more rapidly. And that you would find out based on a biopsy and an expert pathologic evaluation. And they tend to be very limited in their involvement of the skin. The vast majority of cutaneous B-cell lymphomas have a very favorable prognosis and are not associated with systemic or internal involvement of lymphoma. They also have a low rate of progression to systemic lymphoma. Many patients ask me about the prognosis about cutaneous B-cell lymphomas, and I have to say the, uh, the, the marginal zone lymphoma and follicular lymphoma have a most favorable prognosis. Um, studies are mostly done in Europe, but also now in the United States, and which included large patients numbers, shows that patients do very well and five-year overall survival is about 95 to 97 percent. There are three major variants. The major variants are called cutaneous follicular lymphoma, cutaneous marginal zone lymphoma, and cutaneous diffuse large B-cell lymphoma leg type. These are the primary cutaneous B-cell lymphomas. Of course, the skin can also be affected by systemic B-cell lymphomas that spread secondary to the skin. There are various markers that come into play. There are various um, immune cells that also, uh, within the infiltrate, that make up the diagnosis. We're using morphology and we're using special stains to further define the subtype. The different tr variants of cutaneous B-cell lymphoma are treated on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, the treatments are tailored to the individual based on the presentation, based on what the skin biopsy shows, and based on other factors such as uh, age and other illnesses associated with the individual. Treatment of cutaneous B-cell lymphoma uh, usually involves skin-based treatments. So what patients can expect is that the area of involvement to the skin is treated either surgically or with radiation. So that just a, a small area of the skin tends to be treated and usually that is enough for the eradication of the cutaneous B-cell lymphoma. Although the incidence of systemic involvement of B-cell lymphoma uh, is rare with cutaneous B-cell lymphoma, all patients will require some type of workup from blood work, maybe scans, to ensure that the B-cell lymphoma is just confined to the skin. Once that is established, treatment choices are made, and typically those treatment choices are skin-directed and just focused on the local area of its skin involvement. The slower-growing variants of cutaneous B-cell lymphoma are treated more locally, unless there's many, many of them, in which case local treatment would be hard, it would be very tedious, and at that time we would usually treat with a drug called rituximab, which is a, an antibody, not a chemotherapy, that will kill off B lymphocytes and, and B lymphomas. In the case of the faster growing cutaneous B cell lymphomas, um, we would often consider chemotherapy, uh, although there's some other newer treatments that are on the horizon. If the treatments are local, they're not gonna involve uh, very much discomfort. Uh, they won't involve any distant side effects. The, the, whatever side effects there would be would be just at the skin. So as an example, if a lesion has radiation therapy, the skin in that area may get a little red or irritated, but it will be limited to just the area that's being treated. Um, and they can expect that the lesions should go away. They're very easily treatable. Um, they can also expect that they may get other lesions and that they'll similarly have to be treated. But still, the patient does very, very well, um, even though lesions may return. 
Follicular lymphoma is usually um, more common on the head and face area, while marginal zone lymphoma is usually more often on the extremities, arms, legs, and trunk. That's very critical that you have the correct diagnosis because different um, differ between the follicular, the marginal zone, and the diffuse large B cell leg type. While follicular lymphoma and marginal marginal zone lymphoma have an excellent prognosis, so treatment is most mostly skin directed, meaning local local radiation, injection with steroids such as Kenalog um, and or excision. The diffuse large B cell lymphoma leg type is more aggressive. And therefore, we need to start um, earlier with systemic therapy. And in many centers, we treat a, co a combination with systemic uh, chemotherapy, antibody such as rituxan, and <clears throat> radiation. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm presenting on primary skin B cell lymphomas. Lymphomas can develop from either T lymphocytes or B lymphocytes. And B cell skin lymphomas are skin lymphomas that develop from B lymphocytes or, or so-called B cells. And about um, a quarter to a third of all skin lymphomas are B cell lymphomas. And the combined WHO and the European um, Organization of Research and Treatment of Cutaneous Lymphoma classification actually um, highlights indolent uh, skin uh, B cell lymphomas and more aggressive types. In the indolent um, are a marginal zone lymphoma and cutaneous follicular lymphoma. Then we have the more aggressive type um, types, which is um, the diffuse large B cell lymphoma leg type, which is of all aggressive, the most common. And then we have also the diffuse large B cell lymphoma other, which is um, not the leg type. We also have uh, uh, an entity that's driven by Epstein-Barr virus, um, which is usually in immune compromised patients and can develop um, ulcerated lesions. And so, um, as you can see here, most of the indolent lymphomas of survival here, what they looked, um, usually those two patients, those two uh, categories um, do really well. Um, the aggressive types um, um, have a little shorter outcomes and more aggressive, as hence it says. And um, there's no data out on the EBV driven mucocutaneous also yet. So how do we diagnose, before I get to the subtypes, how do we diagnose um, our patients with B-cell lymphoma? First of all, is that, you know, you have a skin lesion and you go see your doctors um, a lot of times, then you get referred to, a, to a, an expert um, in cutaneous lymphoma. Um, history and physical exam are crucial, getting a detailed history of how many lesions have come, how long have they been staying, what are the associated symptoms like itching or ulceration. Um, and then, you know, skin biopsy is key. A lot of times because these are rare diseases and have a wide differential diagnosis um, and also overlapping characteristics, sometimes um, multiple skin biopsies from different um, body sites, if there is uh, if there are multiple lesions uh, or skin growths can be very helpful to recognize the pattern um, under the microscope. Um, and so that is crucial. And as you can see here on the left lower uh, um, hand side of this um, of this page, um, we do a lot of a lot of times we have to do multiple stainings to sort of categorize these lymphomas into the right category, um, which can then uh, certainly affect management. Now, also we want to do systemic work up to make sure that the, these are our skin lymphomas, or if they are beyond the skin, we understand um, how extensive they are. So we check your blood, um, we check a CBC where it looks at the white blood cells, the red blood cells and platelets and give us some um, good information of what's going on. We check 
um, you know, your liver and kidney function, which is representative of like the major visceral organs, um, and um, check inflammatory markers, as well as imaging study. Um, so for staging, we do um, um, CT chest, abdomen, pelvis, CT scan, or a PET scan, where we can take a look at your lymph nodes um, and uh, also take a look at to see if there's any other organ involvement. And once we put all this information, so the, the clinical um, information, the histopathology information, so what we see under the microscope with the other workup that we've done, then we try to categorize this. And this works out both for B cell and T cell um, um, lymphomas. We then put them in, in, in different categories, which guide our management. So when we have, in general, there are some treatment principles and there's no, um, so um, if we have a low-grade B-cell lymphoma and sometimes blood tests show an infection, sometimes not, you may start out just treating with an antibiotic first and see, and sometimes these lymph low-grade lymphomas even shrink with just antibiotics. Um, both low-grade lymphomas, follicular lymphoma and marginal zone lymphoma, they are treated the same way. So, um, and what we do here, and many do, we can watch it. It depends, you know, who, it depends on my patients. If someone says, you know, I don't want to have treatment. If you're telling me it's a low grade, and I said, I'm okay to watch it as long as you come back and so that we can take a look and see and examine you. Um, or we can have intralesional um, injection with steroids, and um, this goes away. We, if it's a single lump, we can also do surgery, or we can apply a couple of um, um, rounds of radiation, like um, into to the skin, to the area. If there are more areas infected, we still can watch it because it's you know still indolent, uh, low grade. We still can do the intralesional steroid injection, or we can do radiation. Um, we would not do localized surgery to multiple lesions. And if the lymphoma is really very widespread everywhere in the skin, which happens, there may be a systemic treatment um, as an option, a systemic antibody treatment. It's called um, rituximab or rituxin, and it can be given a few courses um, and usually for treatments. Um, and but this is, you know, decision really if it's widespread. If if you think um, you want to be treated, and if your doctor also thinks you should be treated, so. What definitely needs to be treated once we have established a diagnosis is the high-grade skin lymphoma, okay? We cannot really wait. And um, this is usually treated with systemic therapy and can be um, treated with systemic therapy in combination with radiation or radiotherapy. A lot of patients can be also included in clinical trials if they're treated in an in a institution, um, where we have you know, uh, clinical trials available. There are now immunotherapies in combination with chemotherapy or so-called CAR T cell therapy. However, this should not be the first line therapy. There should be the established treatments um, that has been given the systemic um, combination um, uh, chemotherapy with radiation therapy. Um, um, if a patient is you know, very, very fragile. I sometimes just think, okay, let's do just radiation and follow you if they cannot tolerate a systemic therapy. But otherwise, usually you do a combination. <clears throat> Next slide. <clears throat> so, you know, we have here, so I put a list together and actually this is um, one of my uh, um, uh, fellows who actually looked what's been done for those um, 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 low-grade um, um, lymphomas and observation, watch and wait, excision, surgery, antibiotics, local radiation, 
you're treating interlesional with interferon alpha. You can also treat interlesionally with rituximab, which is the anti-CD20, which um, you know, um, is a marker of the B cells. And then you have the systemic chemotherapy. It's called CHOP. And in combination, um, you usually use it in combination with the rituximab, and it's called RCHOP. Or you can use it in combination with radiation, then it's called radiochemotherapy. But there have been also patients who treated now, um, you know, just with topical steroids, creams, or ointments, with a topical imiquimod, which is an approved treatment for skin cancer. And also with a mechlorethamine, it's called also otherwise nitrogen mustard, which is approved for early stage T cell lymphoma in the skin. And um, so-called photodynamic therapy, which is actually a, a form of light therapy for skin cancer. And there have been others, medication like um, uh, um, um, lenalidomide or thalidomide, there are um, drugs that are approved for um, multiple myeloma, which is a, 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 a B cell or, or in a B cell family, but it's systemic. It usually rises in the bone marrow and clinical trials. So there's a lot what you can see here in, 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 in the treatment um, armamentarium, but um, um, the most common things that are really used are is watching, surgery, antibiotics, and local radiation, because most of those skin B cell lymphomas are indolent. And, um, and this, is, this is, again, I, I, I wanna emphasize it because this is very important to know. And um, can we go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> So um, this is a more, little bit more complicated slide, has a lot of numbers. And um, so this is um, 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 a list, um, you know, these are patients um, that were published and, and a team in, in, in Leiden in the Netherlands looked into all the studies and they said, okay, what happened if those patients were treated? Um, were they always were they were they cured or were they or did the it did the lymphoma come back? And actually, when you look, what's circled here on the red here is is relapses, and you can see it's almost it's nearly fifty you know up to fifty percent, regardless of treatment, and um, regardless of treatment, and and um, so it should also highlight. Um, even if you give systemic therapy, you may not, you get relapses and you may not need systemic therapies in indolent B-cell lymphomas. 